Hey everybody, Rob here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the front sumo springs, front helper springs on our 2004 Fleetwood Southwinds motorhome. Now here at eTrailer we do get a lot of questions, especially when it comes to motorhomes. Because let's face it, they're really big vehicles and if you haven't driven one before, once you get behind the wheel, it can be a little nerve wracking. And one thing that nobody really talks about is how poorly they handle. And what I mean by that is the way that they drive. Sure, the insides are very nice, they're comfortable. Once you get on the road, they don't handle very well because they are very top heavy and there's a lot of area for the wind to catch. So we end up getting pushed around on the highway or if we're taking a sharp turn, it feels really top heavy, we start feeling like we're leaning. Well, by the time we're getting where we're going, we're gonna be exhausted because we're shifting around in our seats so much, fighting the steering wheel and trying to keep our motorhome driving straight. Not to mention all the passengers in the back and all of our gear, it ends up getting tossed around and it's just not an enjoyable thing. But that's where our sumo springs are gonna help. They're gonna alleviate a lot of those problems. When we're driving down the road, it's gonna cut down on that body roll. So if we do have a big gust of wind come by and it pushes against the side, we're not gonna to have to fight as much. We're not gonna get that leaning and kind of mushy soft feeling going in and out of the turns. And especially when it comes to bumps, it's definitely gonna soften them up a little bit and give us a lot smoother of a ride. Now, if you're looking for a full upgrade, if you're having problems with sway, possibly bouncing, kind of a jarring feeling, the front up here is definitely gonna help with the sumo springs, but there's also rear sumo springs available, and that way we can have full support from the front all the way to the back of our motorhome. And the sumo springs in the back here are definitely gonna help out, especially if you flat tow a vehicle. Because once you have all that weight back here, it kind of starts to wag the back end of your motorhome. And once the back end starts moving, it wants to pivot the front end the other way, which then again, we end up fighting that steering wheel and really trying to keep control of our motorhome, which ends up leading to a not enjoyable ride. But the sumo springs are definitely gonna stiffen everything up, give us a lot more stability, and make it that much easier to tow our vehicle. So now that we have everything installed and in place on our motorhome, let's go ahead and take our test course and see exactly how much improvement we got and how our motorhome handles. So we're first gonna come up to our bumps course. We'll be going over the bumps right about five miles an hour. Now I can definitely feel an improvement over the factory ride. Don't get me wrong, the bumps are still there. But once you get over them, there's not an overwhelming rocking feeling. It still rocks a little bit, but it seems to settle out pretty quickly and we're back on our way. Now we're gonna come up to our slalom course. We're gonna be going through that about 10 miles an hour, but we're just gonna go in and out of the turns to see how much body roll we have and how much it actually reduces. immediately tell a pretty good difference. It doesn't handle like a sports car, but it definitely is a lot more stable than when it first started, and it's a lot easier to keep control of the motorhome as I'm going in and out of the turns. And it doesn't have so much of a leaning feeling, it just generally wants to go into the turn and come out of the turn, rather than leaning really hard and then turning a lot more stable it doesn't feel as soft and mushy and have so much of that body rolling feeling to it and really the big difference here is even just the small potholes and the bumps going through the parking lot they definitely have calmed down a lot not that they're gone they're still there you can still feel them but it's not a jarring kind of jolting feeling resonating through the seat. It's just a mild bump, and like I said, once you get over it, it's pretty much gone, settles down. So here's what our sumo springs look like once we have them installed. They're actually gonna replace our factory jount stops. They mount to the bottom of the frame, and you can see they're gonna make contact with the front axle. That way, whenever we're driving, they're gonna provide us that support we need so we don't have so much bouncing and jarring feeling when we're driving down the road. These are really gonna greatly increase the stability of our motorhome. 
because the construction of these are made out of a microcellular urethane. So they're gonna definitely absorb a lot of those bumps and shocks as we're driving, smoothing out our ride. Now the nice thing too is, is that we're gonna have one on each side of the axle right on the bottom of the frame. But since they're not connected, they're gonna work independently from each other. So it's definitely gonna help out with a lot of those sway feelings. Definitely gonna feel like our motorhome's not as top heavy because when we go into a turn, one side is gonna come down and compress while the other side is going to stretch out. Well, since they're gonna be fighting each other, it's gonna naturally want to try to come back to nice and level. And as it progressively starts to squish down, it's gonna become more stiffer because our springs actually have a progressive rate to them. Which really what that means is, is the harder we press down or the more weight that's put on top of them, the stiffer they're gonna become and the more support they're gonna provide us. When we don't have a lot of weight on them or we're not pushing down on them really hard, they're gonna have a soft engagement, so we're not gonna to have to worry about this really jarring, shocking feeling coming from the front end. And the thing I really like about the Sumo Springs is that when they do compress, they're not gonna bulge out to the side too dramatically. They're gonna compress vertically and have very minimal side-to-side -side expansion which is nice because we're not gonna have to worry about any nearby components potentially damaging the springs or the springs damaging the other components. Now, unlike airbags, I think the best thing about our Sumo Springs is the fact that they're completely maintenance free. Once we have them in, we can completely forget that they're there and we can just enjoy our motor home. Airbags are gonna require us to monitor the air pressure that's inside the bags, not to mention the installation is gonna be a lot more involved than these. You're gonna have to run lines, mount brackets, and a lot of other things. These are gonna simply bolt onto the frame. We're not gonna have to drill or cut anything at all. Now, I know motorhomes go all over the country and see a lot of different environments. And the great thing about our Sumo Springs is that we're not gonna have to worry about any kind of environmental things that are gonna start breaking it down. The urethane is gonna be resistant to most automotive chemicals like oil, gasoline, and even UV rays. We shouldn't have too much problems with that since it's underneath the motorhome, but rest assured we shouldn't have to worry about any kind of environmental issues or even temperatures. If we're down in the desert where it gets extremely hot, shouldn't have to worry about these because these can withstand temperatures up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, or if we're up in the mountains where it gets extremely cold, these can withstand up to negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. So we know that these are gonna last us a really long time. Our front sumo springs are gonna have a weight rating of 1500 pounds. Now that's gonna be at 50% compression, but just keep in mind that's not an increase to the payload of your motorhome. Our sumo springs are really there just to help support the extra weight of our motorhome and give us a nice smooth ride so we can actually enjoy it. Now that we've seen what our sumo springs look like and gone over some of the features, let's make sure you have the confidence to do it at home and we'll show you how to get them installed. And the great thing about it is we're not even gonna have to lift the motorhome off the ground. You can use the leveling jacks to lift it up just enough and we won't even need any special tools. In fact, let's go ahead and do the whole process together. To start our installation, we want to park our motorhome on a nice flat level surface. And I always recommend using the parking brake. Now we need to lift up our motorhome. And I understand that nobody at home has a lift big enough to lift their motorhome. But we don't need to lift it to where it's off the ground. You can see that our front tires are still in contact with the ground, but we used our leveling jacks to stretch the suspension out. So we have a little bit of room in between the frame and the axle. Now we can move underneath and we're going to move directly under the front end right to the front axle. Right at the front axle and here's the frame member right above it. Now we're going to have our factory jout stops. These are bolted in and the easiest way that I've found to remove these is if you just grab the jout stop, we're going to twist it just to break it loose a little bit. But you see this frame member here. It's open behind there, and there's actually a nut that's holding our jump stop in. So you're gonna grab yourself a 9 16th wrench. We'll come in behind that plate. You wanna hold that nut with the wrench as you grab the jump stop and turn it. That way we can loosen everything up. Now typically you can get this kind of wedged into the frame and then start turning it. That way you don't have to actually hold 
the wrench and you just let the frame hold it for you. Once you have it unthreaded, you should be able to reach into the frame rail. We're going to pull out a washer. There'll be a split lock washer in there. And we're also going to have a hex nut. I'm going to go ahead and pull those pieces out of the frame and we can set our jounce bumper aside because these pieces are not going to get reinstalled. Then we can grab our sumo spring. We want to remove the nut off the top. There's also going to be a split lock washer on the stud as well. So we'll pull that off. And we just want to feed the stud into the same hole that we removed our jounce bumper from. And then on the inside of the frame, we'll follow it up with that lock washer. Make sure it goes over the stud. And then securing it down with that lock nut. Now typically it's easiest just to get it started even if it is a little loose. Just make sure the nut's threading on there. But since it's a lock nut, usually you can't get it too tight by hand. So we're gonna leave it a little loose, but we'll grab a 13 millimeter wrench. And using that same method of just holding the nut on the inside, we're gonna tighten up our jounce bumper to the top of it is nice and snug and flat against the bottom of the frame. Now that it's nice and snug, pull the wrench out. And that's the exact same way we're gonna put in the other sides. So we're gonna move over to the other side, pull the jounce bumper out, and install our new spring over there using the same combination of hardware. You just wanna make sure that your new spring isn't spinning around and that you get it pretty snug, but again, grabbing the spring and tightening it while you're using a wrench to hold it will get it nice and snug. Just make sure it's not moving. But with all that being said, again, I'm Rob here at eTrailer.com, and that'll finish up your look at the Sumo Springs Helper Springs on our 2004 motorhome.